Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going over a few ways you can test your LM308 to see if they're, if they're genuine or not. These are a couple of tests I've come up with that you can, that you can check your chip with to see um, if it is an LM308 or, or if it's um, something else that's been rebadged. So on the topic of rebadging, just in case you're not aware, um, if you buy an LM308 from eBay, you're going to get a salvaged unit. You won't get a new, a, a new manufactured chip. This is not always bad. It, it obviously is bad if they've just taken any old chip and rebadged it. But if actually, sometimes for some strange reason, they salvage LM30, uh, they salvage any IC chips out of, out of old boards. Uh, they desolder them. They sand the top and re-etch them so that I think the idea is so there's conformity so that they look like they have new stock um, uh, because obviously between uh, over the years different chips have been dif have man been manufactured and all the laser etching on the top it, it, it all it would there, there wouldn't be consistency between all the chips so they sand them off and they and they and they re-etch the name on the top so that they all look the same. That doesn't bother me if it actually is an LM three hundred eight if it's been if it's been salvaged. But often you'll find you'll get a chip that's not an LM308. It could be a TL071 or an LM741. And that's been, that's been etched and labeled as an LM308. Those chips will still work in the Proco RAT. Obviously, when we're talking about LM308s, we're talking about the Proco RAT because that's the most famous use for the LM308 in the pedal world. And the LM308 is a unique chip no longer manufactured anymore, so you've got no hope of getting one brand new. Obviously, that's why most people go to eBay to find them. And it has a unique property, which is the slew rate. Briefly, the slew rate is basically how the chip reacts to the input um, and how, how fast it can react to the input. And if the frequency that goes through the chip is too high, um, it will not be quick enough to be able to amplify um, high frequencies and they will get kind of uh, chopped off and that's what gives the LM308 its unique sound. A replacement for the LM308 was the OP07 um, and that was used extensively in um, Proco Rat um, pedals, that was their replacement and reputably they sound exactly the same. We'll actually take a listen to them in a different video but in this video I just want to focus on how you can test your LM308 to get a pretty good, there is one small caveat, Pretty good idea whether it's going to be an LM308 or not. So this is the internal schematic for an LM741. And as you can see around the outside of the schematic, there are pins. The pins numbered 2, 1, 3, 5. Um, you've got input, minus, input, plus, etc, etc. The two I've marked down the bottom left-hand corner here are pin 1 and pin 5. If we tested pin 1 and pin 5 with an ohmmeter, uh, a multimeter, to, to check for resistance, and we found that there was around 2K of resistance on, on pin one and pin five, we could assume that it is an LM, LM741. The thing is, large majority, from what I've seen, the large majority of chips have this um, small resistance on pin one and pin five. What makes the LM308 um, different is that it has no connection on pin five. So, the, so pin five is actually um, physically disconnected from the die, and we can actually see that um, in this picture. Um, you can see that 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 um, that that leg is physically disconnected from the die, so there there you will measure nothing on on pin five. So that's easy. Just measure pin one and pin five, and if there's uh, if there's no resistance on that pin uh, on between those two pins, then you're done. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. There is one small caveat. There is another chip I know of that actually has pin 5 disconnected as well, which is OP07. The OP07 was the replacement for the LM308 um, in the Proco RAT, and reputably it sounds very similar. But if you want one extra level of, um, of checking your chip, um, I have an LM308, which I suspect is genuine, and I also have a um, OP07, and I've gone through the painstaking, mind-numbing process of checking every single pin on both of those chips and reporting what resistances I get. And they both measure K 
completely differently. Not a little bit differently, completely differently, which makes me think that the LM308 is an actual LM308. So you can check my measurements with you, against your suspected LM308 to see if you've got an LM308 or an OP07. Um, as you can see, there's, as I said before, there's major differences between the two. Um, I mean, if you look at just first like pin one, the first two columns, you can see for the OPO7, 13 meg, 13 meg, 1.3 meg, etc. There's only one, there's only one resistance on, on the LM308 that comes up and that's um, pin four. There's more differences than there are actual similarities between the two chips. That's why um, I'm suspecting that my LM308 is an actual LM308 and not an OPO7. And note the polarity. So the you need to have your multimeter leads the right way around um, because the, obviously inside an, an, an op amp there's diodes and transistors, etc. So the polarity has to be correct. So in this case, the pin numbers across the top of the spreadsheet are the um, uh, is the positive lead on your on your multimeter, and the um, the the pin numbers down the side are the negative of your multimeter. So I'll show you the quick test, which is the, um, the resistance check on pin one and pin five, just so you can see it in action. Um, so this is, you can see the labels there for each chip. So pin one and pin five on the OPI7 is disconnected. Pin one and pin five on the LM308 is also disconnected. Pin one and pin five on the TL071, as you can see, is around two kilo, two kilo ohms, which is what we expected. And the UA or the LM741, um, the resistance on that is 2.8K. So it's got a low, low, um, low resistance on that, on, on that one as well. So I'm fairly confident that mine is an LM308 just from, the, from checking through all the, all the um, resistances on both of the chips. Um, and I'm gonna do a sound test between um, uh, the LM308, the OP07, and the TL071. Because what I want to know is, can you actually hear a dis difference? If you get a, if you buy some uh, chips, just let's just think hypothetically here, you buy some chips from eBay, you check pin one and pin five and find that it is disconnected. If it's an, if it's an LM308 or an OP07 and there's no difference between the sound, then it doesn't really matter um, which way to go with those. Obviously, if there is a resistance, it'll sound like a TL071, but can you hear much difference with that either? So that'll be the next video. So there's only one other, there's only one other check that you can do with the LM308, which I've read about, but it's unconfirmed whether this works or not. Apparently, the LM308 will only work, um, uh, is the only chip that will work if you remove the compensation cap, which is that 30 picofarad cap um, near the IC. The, even the OP07 won't work if that, chip, if that cap is not in place. But I've also heard that it does actually work or it will work to a certain extent perhaps with the OP07, like you'll get a splattery sort of distortion. It won't sound quite right, whereas the LM308 will sound exactly the same. So, that, so there's difference in opinion with that test. I'm not sure if that is actually the case or not. So hopefully between all these little little tests, um, you can work out um, whether yours is an actual um, uh, is a is a real LM three hundred eight, or at least give you the confidence that you feel like you have something that that is most likely an LM three hundred eight. But really, um, these scientific tests are, uh, are good. But really, at the end of the day, um, it what really matters is how it actually sounds in the circuit and whether you can actually hear any difference as well. So that'll be in the next video. We're gonna we're gonna test these. Um, we're going to test these three chips and I'm going to be testing it in my new DBE Tasmanian Devil. Little plug, if you need the, if you're actually building a rat, you can get the PCB from my website, doitsoutguitarpedals.com.au. As I always say, we've priced them very competitively, i.e. cheap, um, and, um, and you can build one yourself. Um, so just if you want to support me and the, and the channel and, and all that sort of stuff, then Think about getting your um, PCV from my web store, diyguitarpedals.com.au. So thanks for that. Thanks for watching this video, and um, and we'll go into the next video, which will be the sound test. Cheers, guys.